Hello and welcome to this edition of Phantom Sports Talk. I'm Josh Fabian and joining me is PJ Sullivan. Our topics today include the NFC East, Villanova basketball, and the Philadelphia Flyers. So in the NFC East, who do you think were the winners and losers, PJ? Well, Josh, in my opinion, there was only one winner in the NFC East this year, and that was Washington Redskins winning the division. They started the season off as the laughing stock of the whole NFC, not just the NFC East. Um, Kirk Cousins started in favor of Robert Griffin III, the former second overall pick, and he completely led the team this year. They got With their poor start, he led them to a 24 nothing comeback against the Buccaneers, and that led their charge the rest of the year. The Cowboys, they were very injury-plagued this year. They lost Tony Romo twice, Des Bryant twice, and their offensive line was pretty banged up. The Giants, they finished around what people expected, the mediocre 6-10. and 10. The Giants aren't very talented, aside from Odell Beckham Jr. and Eli Manning, and they also missed the presence of Jason Pierre-Paul in their D-line. And the Eagles, perhaps the biggest surprise of the NFC East this year, they had the six best odds to win the Super Bowl. They, Chip Kelly... They gave him control of the team in the offseason, and that really didn't help him very much. He signed DeMarco Murray, placed him in his awkward shotgun formation, and he came off a near-record-breaking season with the Cowboys in 2014. And in 2015, he only had 702 rushing yards. Um, drafting Nelson Aguilar, I don't think, was the right move. They do need receiver help, but I don't think he's the answer. And they should build a receiving core around Jordan Matthews for the upcoming season. Yeah, well, like you said, with Washington winning the division, they were probably the only winner. And Kirk Cousins looks to be the next face for the franchise there. So it looks like they came out with two wins with winning the division and finally finding a quarterback that fits their offense and can lead them the rest of the way. And then, like you said, Giants finished mediocre 6-10. and 10. Odell back on another great year. Eli probably won the best of his career. But aside from them, there was nothing really special about the Giants. Cowboys injury play, they, they desperately missed uh, having DeMarco Murray back there in the backfield, and they couldn't really find an answer back there. So their rushing was off all year long, and missing Tony Romo and Des Bryant just tore their team apart. And then, like you said with the Eagles, probably the biggest surprise in the NFC, and it all it's all leads back to Chip Kelly with making his moves in the offseason and we all looked and thought that with their six best odds to win the Super Bowl that they were going to go far. And you could see midway through the season after starting out with a lo- with two straight losses, you could see that the team wasn't there yet and that they needed time to kind of click and build some chemistry. I think they built some chemistry as the year went on, especially towards the end with the way Sam Bradford started to play after coming back from separating the shoulder. And DeMarco Murray started to get some more rushes and some more rushing yards but it just wasn't enough to propel them into the playoffs. And I think right now, firing Chip Kelly and fi- and getting new coach Doug Peterson is the right way to go for them, and it's going to help them in the future. So then my second question about the NFC East, what do you think is the, the biggest keys for this uh, division to get back on top? Well, it just has to be finding talent. A lot of teams are left without talent right now. I mean, the Cowboys, they definitely have some great talent with their offensive line. Like, you could stick someone like Chris Polk in their backfield and he'd still have over 1,000 rushing yards, but they just have to stay healthy. The Giants, they need to capitalize with free agent signings. And the Redskins, now that Kirk Cousins has full confidence being a starter, I think you could look for them to do some damage. And the Eagles, once you place DeMarco Murray back in the I formation, once you get everyone healthy with their new head coach, probably placing Sam Bradford back on the center where he's comfortable. Everything will just set in. Like The Eagles have a fantastic defense, and once all those pieces fall into place, I think this division will be pretty good. Yeah, going on what you said with the Eagles, I think they need to look for some line help too because their offensive line did struggle this year with uh, the third most sacks given up. And it also will help to see Sam Bradford for another year with this offense, maybe get some chemistry. And with Doug Peterson's eye formation, I think it's also going to help the run game because you have tremendous running backs, the three-headed dragon, you could say, with Sproles, Ryan Matthews, and DeMarco Murray in the backfield. And if you could utilize all of them to their full advantage, it'll just propel this team further. And Washington, I think they finally reached their point with the quarterback, finding a quarterback. 
Now it's just getting those last few puzzle pieces into the place so that they could be a real talk about winning the championship. And then you got Dallas, who's got real talent, but are injury played. So if they could get healthy and get one more good year out of Tony Romo and maybe get some other pieces to fall into place, I think they could have a tremendous year next year. And then the Giants just need to capitalize with all the cap room they have and the draft picks they have because right now they're in search for young talent and also proven leaders as veterans. So moving now into the NCAA basketball, we have Villanova Wildcats who are on a tear right now at fourth nationally ranked team. What do you think has been the key all year for them? Just the outside shot. They're absolutely deadly. They run the four-guard system that Jay Wright's become famous for. They put Daniel Ochefu in the key, and they spread the floor and just work the ball around and shoot open threes. And they have excellent freshman shooting out of Jalen Brunson. And there's some leadership from Ryan Archidiakono and Daniel Ochefu, and that just helps the team a lot. Yeah, and I think it's a big help having Josh Hart playing the way he has this year with leading the team in points and assists per game. And I think it all, it's also key when you have a guy like Daniel Cheff, who's a proven leader down low, who bangs it out down low and gets the missed shots because then that creates our second chance points for uh, Villanova. So Jay Wright has been coaching this uh, team for a very long time now, since 2001. What do you think has been the key for his error? His ability to reload, you know, they lose a player and they replace him. It's not like they, um, for instance, Mike Nardi, he w he went and then they found Scotty Reynolds. Scotty Reynolds carried the team for a few years. He was gone. They found Malik Waynes. Once he left, it was Ryan Archidiakono. So he's just able to reload. Yeah, I also think it helps when you can fit the players into the offense that he's won. And he hasn't, he hasn't gone out and just gotten the top best players. He's gone out and got the best players to fit his style of offense and his style of play. I think that's what's made his team the, uh, one of the best ever since he came to Villanova. And it also helps that he's smart enough to get a down low presence with his four guard play so that he can spread the floor, but he can also have a guy down low to get the missed chances. And then finally, moving to the NHL with the Philadelphia Flyers. They've been kind of streaky this year, ups and downs. What do you think they need to change right now that could propel them into the playoffs? Got to be goaltending. You got to start Michael Neuverth more. Goaltending for the Flyers has been so inconsistent since Robert Esch left after the 06 07 season. They've had so many stars. They've had Martin Biron, Antonio Nitamaki, Brian Boucher, Ray Emery. The list just goes on and on. So goaltending needs to um, step up. Their defense is going to be fantastic in a few years, and that's another thing that's struggling right now. Aside from Michael Delzado and Shane Gossespier, they don't really have much on defense. And their forward play, they just need to be a little more selfish with the puck. It seems like they try to work it around more. They don't get enough, sh enough shots on that. Like, they'll spend half a power play trying to set up, and then once they set up, they just get the puck ripped off them and their chance is gone. Yeah, like, I think... What you say with the goaltending, we need to find a secure, they need to find a secure starter. And the defense, once you bring up rookies like uh, Ian Provenov and all them, I think it's just going to help propel this team. And right now, I see them, they're kind of sneaking into the playoffs right now, probably that eighth or seventh seed. But it's really going to be key if they can start winning those two to one, one nothing games. Because right now, they lose almost every one goal game. They're probably one of the worst in uh, those one goal games and it'll also be key if you could get people like Claude Giroux and Jakub Voracek to start putting the puck in the net and not trying to pass as often and so that leads me into my second question do you think this team with the forwards they have if they just add the defensive players will be a Stanley Cup champion one day? That's hard to say Josh right now their defense looks very good in a few years but by the time their defense reaches their full potential Claude Giroux will be getting up there in years. Jake Voracek will be getting up there in years. Wayne Simmons will be getting pretty old. And they just got to reload. And another issue for the Flyers that I didn't mention earlier is their inability to perform in the shootout. Like, overtime was an issue earlier this year, and then Shane Gossespierre came up, and they've been winning more games in overtime with his presence being felt. But if they get to the shootout, they're just done. They have absolutely nobody that could put it in the net during the shootout. Yeah, well, I think if we can get the rookies for the defense up here and get them some experience, I think you have a chance with the offense 
if the defense could just click and hold teams to like less than two goals or two or two goals, I think you have a chance with this offense if you could put a little bit more puzzle pieces together and get that solid goaltender. I think they have a chance to make some noise in the next few years. But it all depends on the on Dave Haxtell in the future and what he's going to do. If he's going to get that solid goaltender, if he's not, if he's going to bring the defense up early or if he's going to keep them down too late. And it's all dependent on when you bring the guys up and when you get the solid goaltender. And so we're going to have to conclude there. And that does it for this edition of Phantom Sports Talk. I'm Josh Fabian. Thank you for watching.